Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. My name is Saima and welcome to Saima's Experience. In today's video, I'm going to go over the 10 most popular cars on the Turo platform chosen by Turo Renters. This is a report that was put out by Newsweek magazine and I am going to give you guys my take on these cars as a power host and as actually a host that has owned some of them. So we're going to go through the list and we're going to break down what makes sense for a renter and why a renter might be choosing these cars. And does it actually make sense for a host to list any of these cars on the platform? So let's go over them and let me share my experience based on seven years of being on the platform, hosting thousands of trips. I'm going to give you guys some insight into these top 10 ranked cars chosen by Turo Renters. So let's begin with number 10. That is a Mercedes-Benz C-Class. Now I've actually had a couple of Mercedes-Benz C-Classes on the platform over the years and they were great. It's a very loved car by renters and I can see exactly why that is the case because this is a nice brand name vehicle. It's a very comfortable four-door sedan. I've also had a two-door convertible version of the car and it has just enough bells and whistles to really give you a luxurious experience at a very fair price. These cars are not super expensive to own. So I can see why this is a great winner by Turo Renters on the platform. However, I must caution you as a host. The reason why I no longer have any Mercedes Benzes on the Turo platform after years of hosting them is because they are notorious for never ending safety recalls. Now, basically what that means is if there is an open recall on a vehicle, it automatically gets unlisted by the Turo platform, meaning you as a host are out of luck and there's nothing you can do about it until a manufacturer has a fix in place that gets registered with the national recall database for the fix to be mitigated. Now you say, why is this an issue? Most cars have recalls. Well, it's particularly an issue with Mercedes Benzes because these recalls can go on for an unknown amount of time. I've had cars where these recalls have lasted six plus months and some cars that I eventually had to sell because there was no fix in sight. So you could really end up in a situation to where you have a vehicle that you can no longer rent. So if I were to give you some advice as a host who's been doing this for a long time, I would say for the time being, you really want to stay away from listing a Mercedes Benz on the platform. Or if you do go down that right route, you want to make sure you research any recall history on that vehicle before listing the car. Very important. Now, if you've hosted a Mercedes Benz on the platform, definitely comment below and let us know what your experience has been. And if you've experienced what I have, as I've heard from many other hosts. Now, number nine on the list is a Hyundai Elantra. And these cars are great. And I can see why renters choose this car because it is known for some of the best fuel economy. Now, back in the day, I actually used to have a Hyundai Sonata listed on the platform. So very similar four door sedan, very economical, um, budget friendly, great for people traveling who are on a budget or looking for just an efficient fuel economy car. And these Hyundais are fantastic. They're reliable. They last forever. And so I can see how a renter could look at a car like a Hyundai Elantra and think to themselves that it is just a great deal and overall value for their trip. Now, what's interesting about hosting cars that are in that line, I didn't keep my Hyundai on the platform for very long at all because unfortunately I personally did not find enough margins in it for the amount of miles that accumulate on cars like that and also the wear and tear. Now a car like this in LA goes for roughly about $43 per day. And you can make roughly, according to Turo's calculator, about $597 per day. Now, if you buy a new Hyundai Elantra, you're looking at about a $20,000 car. So a monthly payment on a car like a Hyundai Elantra could end up being about $360 
per month. Now, if you do the math, 597 minus 360, you end up with a profit margin about $237 per month. Now, of course, there's a lot of give and take on both ends, all depending on how you get into the car, what your purchase price is, what your payments are, and that determines what your profit margin is going to be. But overall, I personally experienced something very similar to where, you know, I was putting in all this time into this car, but unfortunately, the profit margin that was coming out of it, especially after insurance and expenses, really wasn't worth it. So for me personally, I would avoid listing cars in that type of category because there just isn't enough money for the time that I'm putting into a car like that. So on the renter side, lots of value, right? Because you can get these cars at a great day rate and they're very fuel efficient. However, on the host end, you end up having a car that accumulates a lot of miles on it, um, also gets a lot of wear and tear and may not be worth the amount of money that you would make on it. Now, I know plenty of people that host cars like this and they do make a lot of money, but again, it all depends on how you are buying into that car and what your expense is in order for that margin to make sense. And number eight on the list is a Honda Civic. Now, again, very similar to that Hyundai Elantra and probably has the very similar type of features that a renter would appreciate, but I think the same economics on the host end do apply with a car like a Honda Civic. Now, number seven on the list, a car that I was far more excited about to see making the list is a Tesla Model 3. Now, if you're familiar with the Turo platform at all, you know that there are a ton of Teslas on the platform, particularly Tesla Model 3s and Tesla Model Ys. And I can see why. Teslas are just overall such fantastic cars. They are really gaining in popularity. More people are finding out about them. Now, back in 2013, 2014, I used to own a Tesla Model S. And then when I joined the platform, I listed that Model S. I had that Model S on the platform for many years and it performed phenomenally and I noticed that everyone always enjoyed the experience of having that car as a rental. So on the renter's end of things, I can see why people love renting Teslas off of Turo because it is such an a type of car that provides such a great experience and I think people just love to feel like they're driving something that is very new age, something out of the ordinary and Teslas are just very cool and trending right now. Now as a host, I can see where the economics of hosting a Tesla really can make a lot of sense, especially if there is still room in your market to add a Tesla. Now, according to Turo's calculator, a Tesla Model 3 will bring in roughly about $135 per day, and you can do about $1,839 uh, for your monthly revenue at an average of only renting your car out 13 days per month. And that is the most important part right there. At 13 days out of the month, which I personally happen to think is a little bit low, you know, bringing in over $1,800 is I think fantastic, especially if you bought into your Model 3 at the base price when they first came out, which was around that $40,000 mark. I think that, you know, you have a huge potential to make a lot of money. So the economics really make a lot of sense on the host side and also provide such a great experience for the renter. So Teslas are definitely a winner on the Tesla platform, the Turo platform. All right, let's get into number six, which is a BMW 3 Series. Now, I was surprised to see this car on the list because it wasn't on my radar. I have not hosted a 3 Series on the platform before, but I have hosted a 2 Series BMW, a 4 Series BMW, X4, 6 Series, 7 Series, and overall, I've noticed that all these classes have performed very well. Now, specifically looking at the 2 and 4, which are probably the closest to the three, I can see why the three made the list because it's just one of those cars, I think similar to the Mercedes-Benz C300, that one, it's a brand name, it's extremely cost effective to own because it's not the high end of BMW, but it still gives people that brand name BMW ultimate driving machine experience and people absolutely love that. 
And these cars actually happen to be really reliable as well because they've been around forever. So they're really tried and true. So you don't tend to run into too many maintenance or mechanical issues. Now, according to Turo's calculator in the LA area, a car like the three series would go for roughly about $78 per day, which means that on average, you can bring in about a thousand dollars a month. All right, we're about halfway through the list. And if you're liking this video so far, be sure to show me your support by hitting that subscribe or that like button on this video. I would so greatly, greatly appreciate you doing me that favor. Okay, so let's get into number five, which is a Jeep Wrangler. I've hosted Jeep Wranglers on the path platform for many, many years, and it was an awesome experience as a host because people absolutely love Jeeps. It's another one of those cars that provides a great experience because oftentimes renting a Jeep is typically linked to the renter having some sort of adventure, right? So they could be going up to the mountains, they could be going out to the desert, to the beach areas. Jeeps are just synonymous with having great adventures throughout your travels. Now, the only reason why I personally got out of hosting Jeeps on the platform is because it was one of those cars that became extremely saturated in my area. A ton of people started listing Jeeps, the day rates really began to fall, and so I just couldn't sustain the profitability of that car in my specific area. Now, there are still many markets out there where Jeeps really thrive. I have some host friends in the Denver, Colorado area, and I know Jeeps do really well out there, so I think it really depends on where you're at. Now, as a renter, of course, adventure experience go hand in hand with the Jeep, so they absolutely love it. But on the host end, there are a few things that you need to be careful about when hosting a Jeep on the platform. And that particularly has to do with any sort of off-roading type activities, because that can create major issues for your Jeep, major damage. So you have to be really communicative with your guests and letting them know that off-road utilization with for the Jeeps is absolutely off limits. That way you protect your vehicle and the guests are not liable for any potential damages that could have occurred. So you do tend to run into that problem. I know I ran into it with all of my Jeeps where people were going off-roading and it would cause a lot of damage. Now Jeeps in the LA area go for about $90 per day and somewhere like Colorado, they're going for at least $100 per day. So if you get it at a good deal, you can probably squeeze a decent amount of margin out of something like a Jeep Wrangler and provide a great experience for your guests. Now I'm gonna combine number four and number three on the list, which is a Toyota Camry and a Toyota Prius. Again, these cars are really in that economical range. Of course, the Prius really being a hybrid, so really emphasizing that fuel efficiency, fuel economy, where people get great mileage while lowering their expense of travel. So I can see why these cars rank high. Now, just my personal opinion based on having something like an, a Hyundai on the platform, I've had a Kia, I've had a smart car, so I have had these economical cars on the platform. Um, I think personally th seeing the trends of Turo over almost seven years of doing this, I do notice that they are moving towards um, cars that are really experiential, right? Something that is unique, something that's different, and that really goes hand in hand with an adventure that somebody is going to have during their travels. Now, does a Toyota Camry or a Toyota Prius really fit that model? I think probably not. Again, just my opinion, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a need in the general rental market for cars that are fuel efficient, especially these days when gas prices are so high and also climbing still. So I can see where people really want to budget for travel and you know save money where they can, and these are both great options. Now, number two on the list, one car that I see a lot of on the platform, and many of my host friends out there, I know you guys host these cars, is a Ford Mustang. I think Mustangs are great. I've never had one, but it is really that all-American experience, that fun, wild ride that is very cost effective to own and also not super high for day rates when listed on the platform. According to Turo's calculator in the LA area, Mustangs average about $72 per day, which isn't 
high and it isn't low. So Mustangs are kind of this nice middle ground where you have a bit more margin than the economical cars and you fall a little bit below the brand name luxury cars, but Mustangs provide that great adventurous experience for people where it's like you're really on vacation mode and you wanna do something fun and be in a Mustang. So I can definitely see how Mustangs are ranked number two on Newsweek's list of the top 10 cars on the Turo platform. Now, before I get into the number one car, which I'm absolutely shocked that this was the number one car, most popular car rented on the Terra platform. I still can't believe it. I just peeked at the name right now. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and just make sure you hit that like button. I would so appreciate that support on this video. So let me get into the number one car. I hate that I'm even saying this, but the number one car, according to this article, was a Toyota Corolla. And I don't know why I was so bummed out to see that that was the most popular car rented on the platform. I know a lot of host friends who have this car and I know that it does well for them. It gets a lot of trips, but it's just, it's amazing that Turo has all these super cool cars listed by host on the platform, but the Toyota Corolla sort of outwins every type of car that's on there. So, you know, I don't really know what to say about it other than the fact that, you know, it's another economical car. It doesn't provide any particular type of adventurous experience. It is definitely budget friendly. It's reliable, fuel efficient. So it hits all of those categories. And maybe that just goes to show you that there is a huge market of people coming into the car rental platform that really do need vehicles that are very budget friendly. Um, so yeah, Toyota Corolla, who would have thought? I'm so curious to know what you guys think about Toyota Corolla as being the number one popular car according to this Newsweek article. Now, in terms of the economics on the host side, the day rates typically go at about $41 per day in the LA market. And on average, according to Turo's calculator, you can bring in about $585 per month. And again, that'll all depend on what the cost of the Corolla is, what your monthly expenses to know what your profit margin is going to be. But I imagine that it is going to be similar to that Hyundai Elantra example that we did earlier. So very interesting that that is the number one car and I'm curious to see if that is going to change throughout the years as the platform continues to grow and moves more towards vehicles that are providing an experience but nonetheless we do want to meet all the rental needs of everyone out there so there are spaces for cars like this on the platform thank you so much for tuning in everybody i am going to post a link to the article down in the description below if you want to learn more about how to find the perfect car to list on the Turo platform, check out my website, powerhost.club. You do want to take the Turo course to learn all about how to do market research, and it will set you up for success on the platform. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, my name is Simon. This is Simon's Experience, and I'll catch you guys in the comments section. Take care, guys. Mwah.